Good morning, everyone. Before we move into our Agape service, I just want to say thank you to Kathy White and Andrew Schuff, who have wonderfully organised our Wednesday services online. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to those many individuals who have contributed to and led these services. As you'll be aware, like the rest of society, we're starting to emerge from lockdown and begin the difficult task of working out how we can safely adapt to our new circumstances. Over the coming weeks, we'll explain to you how we're going to do this. Our first stop has been to open up the church building for private prayer on Sunday afternoons from 2.30 to 4.30. Maybe some of you intended this Sunday. We've also opened up the church building for weddings and funerals, although rightly, but sadly, there are tight restrictions on the number of people who can attend and what we can do in those services. In all the changes over the coming months, I want you to know that we'll never forget that because of old age and underlying health conditions, there will be some of you who will continue to voluntarily shield or at least avoid gatherings of people such as the church service, even with social distancing. We want you to know that we will continue our online provision so that you're not separated from us, your church family, by this horrible pandemic. We are in strange times, but know each one of you that you are precious members of the St Lawrence's church family. And even more importantly, you are precious members of Jesus' kingdom and sons and daughters of God. So let's turn our attention to celebrating that truth in this agape service. Now, just in case you haven't joined in an agape service before, an agape or love feast is a way of breaking bread together as Jesus did with people in all sorts of settings. You may like to join in at home with some bread and wine or juice. I suggest that you press pause for a moment if you haven't got that to hand so you can disappear to the kitchen and, and get some bread or wine or juice with which you can join us. And so we open our service with the greeting. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Good morning and I add my welcome to that of Steve's. Lovely to see Steve here with us this morning. I'm Cathy, the lay reader from St Lawrence Church. We join together as always um, the words in bold will be for you to follow and to, to say along with me and um, we will be singing some hymns, some fantastic hymns. I'm really, um, really looking forward to having a really good, good sing today. So first of all, let's say hello to each other. Hi everybody and hello to God, which is the reason that we've all joined together. So come close to God and he will come close to you. The Lord our God is worthy to receive glory and honour and power for he has created and redeemed us. And together we say, Heavenly Father, in our worship help us to sing your praise, to confess our sins, to hear your word and to bring our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have the the wonderful, wonderful knowledge that we can come to God at any time, not just on a Wednesday morning or on a Sunday morning, but at any time and say our confessions. We can actually know that we can be freed from any guilt or anything that we've done wrong. We can be forgiven. So we come to God with prayers of penitence. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, we say together, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments. My wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, 
the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thanksgiving in our heart. Let everything we do or say be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. I'm going to hand over to Steve now and he's going to do the reading for us. I'd now like to read to you our Bible reading for today. It's taken from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 25 to 59. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're now going to sing together, I am the bread of life. So, okay, let's give this one a real good shout out. Let's open those windows. Again, I know it might be raining, but never mind. Let's open those windows. Let's give our neighbourhoods a good blast of I am the bread of heaven.
Steve's going to um, preach to us now and he's talking about Jesus being the bread of life. Steve. Our saying of Jesus this week that we're exploring is what we've just heard at the end of our reading. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I'm going to take you back to the very start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you remember all the panic buying as people who are going to be asked to shield stocked up for their enforced hibernation? But then it got a bit messy because lots of other people decided to join in and it all went a bit Lord of the Flies. The supermarket shelves were stripped bare. Electrical stores even had to put a limit on how many chest freezers you could buy because people were buying them to fill up their garages to store more food. One of the things that I remember that surprised me a little bit was that you couldn't find flour for love or money in Sainsbury's or Aldi or anywhere. Even the shop on Smithy Lane didn't have any for a while. And when it did, it rationed it to one purchase to stop the panic buying from taking over again. I guess I was surprised because I kind of thought maybe, I think wrongly, maybe that bread and bread making had become more like a leisure activity for the middle classes rather than something that people would consider an essential. I sort of assume that these days people would see pasta and baked beans and ready meals as the essentials they needed to stock up on. In the context in which Jesus lived and speaks, bread and water are the essentials of life. Even more so, they are in the context of the people of Israel's journey from captivity in Egypt to the Promised Land. Bread has a massive significance to the Jewish people. They were totally dependent on bread, on manna from heaven, as we heard in our Bible reading, to sustain them on that long journey. Without God's provision, without the bread of heaven, they would have perished. They would have starved to death. Jesus says to them, and he says to us, I am the bread of life. In that, he's essentially saying, I am life. Jesus is saying that without him, we will perish. Jesus is saying that he's not an optional extra for those who think their lives might benefit from a bit of spirituality. He's saying that he is essential, central to life. As Jesus reminds us all, we are created with a spiritual hunger in us for significance, for purpose, for meaning, for love. We may try to feed that hunger with many things, but Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Together we're going to say the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? And together we say, we believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Kathy now to lead us in a time of prayer. For our intercessions this morning, we are using um, again the words, I am the bread of life. Let us pray. Jesus said, I am the bread of life of life. When we think of how much bread means to us, how it is a staple part of our diet, we realise how much Jesus means to us as the bread of life. 
He sustains us. He gives us everything that we need in order to survive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are hungry. We pray for those who have no bread. We pray for those who have no food. We pray especially for those in war-torn areas of the world. We pray for those, especially at this moment, who are suffering from the pandemic. We pray for those in India, Africa, in the Americas. Father, we, pr we pray that you will provide their bread, not just bread to eat, but the knowledge and bread that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling at this moment through ill health, being homeless, for those who have no money, for those who have recently been made redundant due to the COVID-19 pandemic, for those who are struggling. Father, we ask for Jesus, the bread of life, to be easily available to them. Father, we ask that as the churches are just starting to open again, we pray, Father, that people will find comfort and hope in you. Father, we thank you that the churches, as a church, has not been closed. We thank you that it's only the buildings that have been shut, but that the church of you, the church of God, has risen up and being out in the communities. We thank you, Father, for taking down our walls and for letting us be set free for a time from constraints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for whom the bread of life seems to have finished. Father, we pray for those who are struggling with grief, with the loss of a loved one, whether it be through natural causes or from COVID. Father, we thank you for their lives and we ask that you will be present and that you will they will feel your presence at this time. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are lonely, for those who are depressed. Father, for all those people who need you and for ourselves, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm to hand back to Steve now for the agape. So you might need to quickly pause and go and get your juice or wine, your bread or biscuit or whatever it is that, you, that we're going to share. So you've just got time to run and get that whilst I hand over to Steve. And so now we come to our agape. We're going to start by giving thanks for the bread and wine, or juice maybe in some of your cases, the gifts of this good earth, enough for all if we can share. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the many blessings in our lives and ask that you would bless us now as we share your good gifts in Jesus' name. And so I'd like to invite you to take 
the bread that you have in your home. Loving God, you provide enough for everyone. This earth is fertile, fruitful and abundant. But we are sometimes greedy, wasteful and selfish. Many go hungry despite our plenty. Many are left outside while we enjoy a feast. But on the hillside, in the wilderness, with 5,000 and more hungry people, Jesus, you took bread that they had, broke it and gave thanks to you. He shared the bread so that no one should be left out and they all ate and were satisfied. Blessed be God forever. So would you like to take some bread in your homes and to remember Jesus as you eat it? And now would you like to take your wine or your juice? Hurting God, you hurt with our pains, you weep with our tears. When we see, when you see how we struggle and suffer, you long for our peace, yet we so often make war. You long for our healing and wholeness, yet we so often turn from you. But at the wedding in Canaan of Galilee, when the wine ran out, you ask them to fill the empty jars with water, and by your grace, water became wine. Sadness was turned to joy, and all were able to share in the best wine of all. Blessed be God forever. So I invite you to take a sip of wine or juice. Dreaming God, you long for us to dream your dream of a world at peace, a people made one, a feast for all, where bread is broken and shared with companions on the road, where wine is blessed and shared with all who are hurting, and all are caught up together in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's say a prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you for your abundant love in creation, your compassionate healing touch in our hurting, your inspiration for our venturing. Thank you for bread and wine to share. Give us grace to follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to finish today by singing Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Fantastic, fantastic, spirit lifting hymn of great praise, of asking God to do something, but more than anything, knowing that he will. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
the notices. Um, guess what? You're going to need your prayer diaries. Now, I'm going to give you all a challenge this week. I want you to phone somebody on your page that you haven't phoned already in lockdown. And then I want you to phone somebody who's not on your page, but who you haven't spoken to since lockdown. Okay, so that's one challenge, two phone calls. Okay, so it might be nice for you to contact your page pastor because the page pastors aren't always being contacted. So use your prayer diaries and get on the phone. It's really, really important to stay in touch. For notices, um, the church is open for private prayer on a Sunday um, between half past two and half past four uh, at the moment. As Steve has already said, we've, um, we are um, discussing how to open the church, um, but things are very difficult uh, with constraints and things that we have to do, we have all the hoops that we have to jump through to make it safe, both for um, anybody who comes to the church and for the regular um, attendance and also for those who are looking after the church. So please pray for the leadership team and for the wardens and Steve that they um, can proceed safely and as quickly as possible so that we can get back into our church. But let's not forget that during this time of lockdown, we've had our boundaries removed. We've been able to be free in a way that we haven't been free for a long time to actually work into our communities. So don't forget to work into your community. Let's pray for the church, pray for our wardens, pray for Steve and the leadership teams who are trying very hard to see the way forward. And also to pray um, for the nation um, as we try very, very hard to come out of lockdown. Um, don't forget our Zoom service, prayer service tomorrow. Um, it would be lovely to see more of you there. And we have a Zoom service on Sunday. Um, if you need the information, contact the office and Jez will send you the links. Um, it would be great to see you all there. Um, one thing about one thing that I, I do like about Zoom is that you can see everybody or you have all these different people on your screen, you can see them and it's really, really nice to actually connect with somebody again. So that's the Zoom services. And one more little thing, don't forget, if you want to do a pebble um, to put at the bottom of the cross for us to make into a wall or something, we need a few to make a wall um, and the moment we've got about five. Um, so if you would like to do a pebble, please encourage your friends, your family, uh, any children that you know to do a pebble and just to put a, a word on it or a picture or, or anything that we can use um, to create something beautiful out of COVID. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Once again, it's been lovely to spend time with you. Thank you to Steve for the Agape. It was lovely to share together and we'll see you next week. And we conclude our agape service with a prayer of blessing. God who longs for our healing, meet us in our hurting with your compassion. Jesus who stands with us, touch us in our brokenness that we may be made whole. Spirit who anoints us with power, Fill us with your grace that we may reach out to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always, now and forever. Amen.